What's up guys, I'm excited today. We're gonna to jump back out in the field. We're gonna look at another hive coming out of winter, first inspection. This one got a whole bunch of winter bee kinds. So we're gonna find out, is it gonna be true? Is it gonna have a lot of brood and a lot of bees like the first one we looked at? Or will it be like the second one that didn't get winter bee kinds? Let's see if the winter bee kinds really ramped up the brood and the bees in this colony. Let's jump in right now. Well, let's take a look at this hive. It went through the winter with no honey supers and I only gave it winter bee kinds. It did not eat as many winter bee kinds as uh, the first one that we looked at. But uh, it's time to take a look. It has a winter bee kind on it right now, actually. And a lot, of, a lot of the bees are using the winter bee kind entrance on top. So it's time to take it off. Although I do see some cooler weather coming in uh, in a few days. So I'm not sure to leave it on or take it off yet. We're going to take a look first. Probably got some comb built in here. Yeah, if you leave the winter bee kinds on too long, then you can always have that extra space up there, the bees would take advantage of it. But there's a lot of bees, as you can see, that are in this hive as well. And we'll leave this, I'll walk you through how I'm gonna kind of clean this up and make sure the queen's not up here and get some of the sugar away from this comb that's built underneath it. It might look like a mess, but it's really not. Not that bad. Anytime the bees are building comb like this in an open space, it means that they're well fed and they're able to turn that sugar, that candy into wax. Now, before we can really do much to inspect this hive, we are gonna have to get these uh, pieces of candy off of it as best we can. Don't throw that in your yard. You don't wanna attract small high beetle it's best to take your excess sugar that might be on, left from the winter bee kind and discard it in a, in a clean way away from bees. You don't want to leave it around your hive. It can attract robbers. It can attract small hive beetle if you just throw it in your yard. So I'm going to collect it and uh, ex dispose of it in a different way than just getting rid of it. If you want to, you could put it out in an open feeder area and... It might help, but again, remember when it starts to rain, then that is gonna just dissolve. Try not to kill any bees when you're doing this, either taking the wax off or the candy. The bees are a little bit louder now that I've taken the top off because they're used to seeing their hive a certain way with the top on it which makes their opening at the top a little dark spot to aim for when landing. But now they're coming in to an open hive and it looks different, so they don't know really how to land like they've been landing and walking into the hive. That's why you see a little more bees out in the front, hovering out in the front. Uh, right now here in Illinois, I got 70 degrees on the thermometer and it's about four o'clock in the afternoon <clears throat> don't have a lot of time to play in this hive hopefully enough time to take a good look at stuff one of the things that i want to show is that thanks for enjoying this video we're going to get right back into this inspection but before we do let me take an opportunity to encourage you to subscribe to my beekeeping channel just crossed eighty thousand because of you i appreciate it Thank you so much. If you're enjoying my channel, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, please. And also click on the bell so that when I come up with another great idea for a beekeeping video, you'll be the first to know. Now let's get back into that hive. I see that the queen has laid eggs in these cells. I was careful not to confuse these 
parts of sugar right here in these cells, but you can definitely tell that by looking into these cells here, those are definitely eggs that the queen has laid. Well, that just means, yeah, there's another one right there. Let me see if I can get that in focus. That just means that I'm going to have to be a little more careful and conscientious about not killing my queen. Because she might be walking around up in these blobs of wax up here. So we'll probably, what we should do first is smoke the bees down off of the wax. And once we get them off this extra comb up here, uh, then we'll make sure the queen's not still around the comb. Uh, now again, this is a hive that was not treated for mites in 2021. And it received several winter bee kinds all through the winter. So we're expecting to see this one in, in decent shape, good shape. Now class, students, what do you think these eggs would become if they were to allow, be allowed to develop out to an adult? The eggs that are in this, these uh, pieces of comb at the top here. Well, those of you that guessed that they might become drones are correct. These eggs that are laid in cells in this stray comb in between spots at the end of comb and like in this case at the top, they would likely become the male drone. And keep smoking the bees off of it so I don't want to injure any bees. Uh, one of the things we're going to be looking for, <clears throat> in addition to see, you know, what kind of shape the hive is in with brood, we're also going to be looking to see if we have any drones yet. I've been thinking about making a split, but it's still too early because I got some nights below freezing coming up in a few days. And I kind of hate to make a split and put a smaller split into a cold night like that. You know, they have only got maybe 10 to 20,000 bees in a split. And if I make a split too early, then those bees could really have some chilled brood, kill brood. So uh, I'm in no hurry. I don't have anything much out there for the bees. Yeah, I mean, they're bringing in pollen off of maple trees and other things, but it's not significant enough yet, in my opinion, to really support a split. It can just be enough right now to help the bees get off get their feet off the ground and into, into spring. All right, that got us a, a good spot here to keep working. I ah, get my trusty little frame holder over here. And This hive, I remember last year, was not as calm and friendly as some of my other hives. So I'm expecting them to be a little, little more uh, impatient with me making an inspection today. A lot of excess comb and uh, a lot of excess propolis on the sidewall here. It wouldn't hurt to get that out of the way just to make, our, make lifting the frame out a lot easier. But I can't waste too much time trying to clean up everything after winter. I just need to get in there and start looking. These frames are not staggered correctly. It's like I got a little careless. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These two plastic ones are a little bit smaller and are kind of just placed in there at a funny angle. I like to remove this first frame against the wall here because I don't usually find the queen here. And that way, if there is an issue with pulling a frame out with difficulty of tightness, I won't accidentally kill my queen.
Oh, okay, so let me look here. This is a deep hive box with a super, overwintered with a deep, and then one super on top of it. And as you can tell, there's a lot of eggs, eggs and larvae down in this frame here. So we're going to have to keep our eyes on the queen since there's evidence that she has been on this frame real recently. You help me look. I'm looking through a veil and you're looking at, at home in the comfort of your chair drinking a cup of coffee or something. <laughs> I'm out here where bees are buzzing. Well this hive is definitely just a, a tightly filled hive of bees. Again, um, the winter bee kinds have really allowed this hive to build up incredibly huge. I'll show you that in just a minute. Let me continue to move some frames out of our way. A lot of propolis that hasn't been worked since last fall, late last summer, so the propolis is a little more of an issue right now. All right, so here we have another frame of mixture of bees and uh, we have a mixture of pollen and nectar and just kind of glancing and see if I see my queen walking around here. When I find the queen I'm going to be very careful with the frame that she happens to be on. This frame here does not appear to have a lot hardly uh, if any eggs in it at all. Now we are up in the top, what we would call the top super. I expected them to use this as a part of the brood as well. I need more smoke. When a hive is full of bees like this, it's great. You come out of winter with a very strong colony, but then it's also uh, a colony that requires attention when it starts to warm up that they don't swarm and all that. All right, I don't see any signs of eggs on this frame. They, they, all these cells have been what I would call polished or cleaned up like they want her to lay there or store something in it. They're dried out, do you see what I'm saying? These cells are ready for, for content, ready for content. I'm hoping that we can see our queen in this top super and some brood because that way I won't have to go down and take the super off and look deeper. It just makes everything a little more convenient for me, faster, less interruption to the colony. But I've got to at least see eggs that tell me the queen is in a good laying pattern right now. I love the J-Hook Hive Tool. As you can see, it really works well for me. All right, good, we have a, we have a good sign of brood right there, capped over brood. I'm um, looking down in the cells too. And of course, I'm looking to see if I see drones or the queen, eggs, lots, lots to look for. Yeah, there's, there's very young larvae in the bottom of this frame, so that's a good sign. Gonna look at the other side. The other side has young larvae in it, glistening in the bottom of the cells. So all is good with this colony having a queen that's laying well. I don't necessarily have to find the queen right now if I don't want to, because I've already established that the hive has a lot of bees in it. It also has brood of various stages, eggs. So there's no need for me to really spend a lot of time looking into this any more than I have to. So right now I'm just doing it for fun and for YouTube entertainment. Okay, again, we're into March. Uh, you know, this is like the first or second day of spring. 
and uh, you can see what kind of brood pattern I have on a frame like this. Let me move some bees off. So this is like just barely coming out of winter after feeding them so much food through the winter bee kinds. You can see what kind of great brood pattern the queen has laid. Those are capped over. That means that the queen laid those at least nine days ago, but maybe longer. I just wanted you to see, and you can see brood of various stages on the outside edges of that capped over brood. Uh, let's look at one more. I'm going to leave this out. All right, let's give it a little smoke. I do see some drone brood being laid. <clears throat> when I lifted that frame out, there was, a, there was some brood down in there that broke open and that was drone brood. Yep, too tight. I have to use a hive tool to get this out on both ends. Well, these bees aren't too bad. They're not bad. <clears throat> yeah, again, uh, look at that. Just a beautiful brood pattern. Capped over brood. The laying pattern is really tight on the queen here. That means uh, there's not many cells that haven't been capped over, so she's a great layer. And I don't want to really look much more. I don't need to find her. I've seen everything I need to find. I wanted to show you guys, not only is there great brood in, on these frames, but down in here you can see the number of bees that are, that are on frames and that are down in this hive. Alright, let's brighten things up. Yeah, so down in this hive you can tell and see how many bees are just packed everywhere. I'm just so excited to see this kind of strong colonies coming out of winter. Again, this was not treated for mites last year. Just doing a little experiment. I think I tested about uh, six hives and I didn't do anything with mites on to see what it would happen. Feeding them the winter be kinds all winter. Well, gosh, I think that hive is stronger than the first one we looked at. That thing is packed full of bees. Unbelievable. Again, I didn't treat for mites in this hive, doing a little bit of experimenting on some hives to see uh, if they would make it through winter uh, without treatments during 2021. And so far, it's really looking good. These hives are doing great. I I'm really impressed. I don't recommend that you don't treat for mites at all. I just wanted to kind of do a little experiment and see what would happen. And wow, this is really impressive to me. I'm excited, I think that's really cool. I I'm really pumped that these hives are just coming out of winter so strong. I think this was the strongest one. The brood that was in that super, I mean, it was capped over. That means the queen was laying eggs about a week or two ago. And now these things are ready to emerge. I've got a workforce. I've got a foraging force ready when the dandelions come out here in a few weeks. So this is going to be exciting to see this hive just expand. And I didn't realize it. I don't know if you caught me, but when I was doing my inspection, when I started it, I kind of thought it was two deeps. And then after I pulled that first frame out, I was like, this is a medium frame. I looked at the front and I was like, oh gosh, this is a deep and a medium super. And boy, did they go through the winter strong. That is so exciting. I, I don't know what to think about this. This is kind of cool stuff for me. I, I'm so happy that through the years, you know, I've lost a lot of bees in the winter time and got so frustrated that I started thinking, how am I gonna keep the moisture level down? How do I keep mite levels down? And how do I get bees to stay warm and well-fed all winter to keep raising more brood? And I did it and I'm just pumped about it. I'm excited. And, I, and maybe those of you that are experiencing the same things with those winter bee kinds um, are happy about that too. Now, let me clarify, I do not, and I'm not promoting, that a winter bee kind will save every single hive. I do not believe that. I think if hives are low on food, the winter bee kind can help them, but winter bee kinds aren't gonna control mites. They're not gonna control diseases that have, things happen. So the winter bee kind is not the cure all, fix all uh, problems that uh, you know, we see in beekeeping. But in my situation, 
where I live and the kind of things that I need to see happen during the winter time, it's a winner. It's a win-win situation. So I'm really pumped about it. And wasn't that cool, that comb that we saw in that winter be kind, the bees ate so much of that winter be kind sugar, they turned it into wax and built comb inside the empty, what is that, uh, inch and a half, two inches of space up there. And uh, they'll do that in the uh, spring, uh, or late winter, early spring, they'll start building some wax up there. So you either need to change it so that they can have more sugar and it cuts down on the space or you need to get it off. In this case today, we got it off, but that little piece of uh, comb I brought in just to show you those eggs, take a look at this image. Isn't that really cool? Some of you have trouble seeing your eggs. Look at this. This is kind of a side view. I mean, it's hard to see eggs when you're looking down in a cell sometimes, but this gives us the ability to see the eggs because the way this was built, uh, there's a, a sidewall missing on the cell wall. So you can actually see that egg and this will help a lot of you say, oh, that's what an egg looks like. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, I get it now. So I hope that's kind of a help to you guys that are wanting to find your eggs that your queens like, which is exactly what a subscriber wants to know. David Hennessy says up here in upstate New York, when should I start seeing eggs? It's been cold, but we got a few warm days this month. I did my first inspection. I saw a lot of bees, but no eggs. Should I be concerned? Thank you, Dave. Uh, yeah, David, that's, uh, by the way, my wife's maiden name is Hennis. That's close to yours, David Hennessy. But uh, David, yeah, you should be concerned. The queen's gonna lay eggs all winter, a little bit. It could be that the little bit of eggs that she is laying, if it's still cold where you're at, it might be on a frame in an obscure kind of spot on the frame that you don't see it yet. But there's usually always some amount of a hand size amount of brood that you see in the winter time. So maybe you just missed it. So we are a little concerned. Let's keep an eye on that hive. Wait until another warm day where you can get in there and really look more thoroughly. As you saw in my inspection today, David, I had brood that was capped over. I had larvae in different stages. And it, that made it uh, easier for me to find that I had a queen because I didn't have to look so much for eggs, although there were eggs up in that winter be kind. So <laughs> that was a pretty easy call. Uh, didn't want to have to see my queen because I didn't want to keep them open that long. But good luck, David. I, I would just inspect again, maybe in a couple of weeks and uh, see if you got some eggs. Thanks for being a subscriber. Another subscriber, Aldi says, hi Dave, thank you for sharing your knowledge. Question, how do you deal with the mold coming out of winter? I get a lot of mold in some hives wintering double deeps or one deep and a medium. Uh, I had mold problems, I sure did, and that's why many years ago I got tired of my hives being wet inside, moldy inside, dying in the winter. That's why I invented the Winter Be Kind, that candy we mix actually absorbs the moisture out of that hive and allows it to make the candy much more pliable to the, for the bees to eat and consume. So uh, that solved my problem. I use an open screen bottom board all winter long to increase ventilation and the winter bee kind has ventilation at the top as well. So that just helps tremendously, David. I hope that's some good advice for you, but thanks for being a subscriber and I'm glad I could answer your question. Give a shout out to another subscriber, TKBs. Laura says, I've been watching the channel since buying my first nuke in 2020. Your content is great and it has been very helpful to me. I always check out your videos because I've yet to find one that wasn't useful. P.S. I would definitely buy the inner cover shirt. <laughs> well, thank you. I give a shout out and thank you for being a subscriber. Appreciate it a lot. Yeah, the inner cover shirt, right? I mean, you know, you got this shirt that says, uh, don't ask me why I don't use an inner cover. I think that'd be a great t-shirt <laughs> to promote my channel. Uh, I don't use an inner cover because I'm always feeding my bees with either my Burns feeding system, like in the spring or fall, and then I go right into the winter with using my uh, Winter Be Kind. And so the only time I'm not feeding my bees uh, very, very long is during the season where I'm gathering honey. So when I have honey supers on there, of course, I'm not feeding my bees. And I don't use an inner cover because I just put the top cover on and it just makes sense to me. Um, it's one less thing for me to have to deal with. I understand and I support and respect all of you that love inner covers. I think it's great that you have them and I think it's great that you use them. And I believe all the reasons that you will cite why they're 
good for you. And I think that's legitimate. I, I agree. The air buffer makes it less stickier to pull the top cover off. I agree, I agree, I agree. I just don't want to use them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so give me a little leadway there, but I don't think they're necessary for my operation. And you know, another thing, I'm in my hives a lot. I think if I had my tops on a long time, I think they would get so propolized down that it would be hard to get them off. But gosh, I'm sometimes opening my hives. I make a lot of videos in a lot of hives. So I think I'm opening my hives up once or twice a week, all of them. So I'm in and out of them a lot. So it doesn't really give a chance for them to come really glued down as bad, I think. But it, those of you that may only inspect, you know, every two weeks or once a month or something, yeah, that, that propolis would really nail down the top cover and the inner cover does help a little bit with that. So many of you took advantage of our online beekeeping courses that we had 50% off on the first day of spring, March 20th. Thank you so much. I wanted to say thank you. I appreciate it. Tons, I appreciate it. Also, if you haven't received a copy of this book that Sherry and I wrote, I would appreciate you taking a look at this. I'll leave links in the description below. Purchase it from our website. We'll give you an autographed copy on it as well. Can't do that if you buy it off Amazon. So uh, be sure and check that out. If you're brand new to beekeeping, this book is really helpful. It'll help you figure out some things, kind of get your head straightened out on what to do and everything. And uh, another thing that's helpful, if you're thinking about getting into beekeeping and you've watched this video for the first time, just kind of fell upon this video, but now you're thinking, how do I get started in beekeeping? I've got a great video made a couple years ago, but it's still just as relevant today on how to start beekeeping. Take a look at this video. Uh, over a million people have viewed it and enjoyed it. How to start beekeeping, and I hope you will. See you next time.